How's it going ladies and gentlemen? I'm some YouTuber, it just so happens to have a camera. Today I want to talk a little bit about uh, the Israeli NSO group. The NSO group <clears throat> is a bunch of ex-intelligence individuals who have a lot of talent, especially when it comes to getting information that's just going over the airwaves. Now, when these individuals left the government, they started a private startup. Uh, where they would provide the service of being able to hack into people's phones with the Pegasus program. The Pegasus program was, or, yeah, the Pegasus, Pegasus app was used basically everywhere except for Canada and the USA, it seems, and the UK. It was used ultimately everywhere else, it seems. <clears throat> but we don't know exactly how far reaching this is because, once again, this is a private security group. Now, this private security group. What, before they use anything within Israel, the information had to go through a, a, a court. And the court, the judge, would say yes or no, you can or you can't do this. But the, the issue is that Israel has been licensing the use to this to other countries. And you got to wonder if these other countries are going to use it for good means or not. And if this is the kind of thing that you should be able to do. Now, the spooky thing is that anyone can hack an Android pretty much. Anyone that knows a bit of code can hack an Android. But this stuff was being used on iPhone 6s. Pfft, iPhones, wow. And what they did is they sent an individual a text. The individual would get that text, click on the link, and it would take them to a web page that, uh, and within that web page, I believe it automatically downloaded something that jailbroke your phone. And it could give up Wi Fi passwords. Man, that's a lot of talent. That is a super ton of talent that they would have had to have in order to do that because man iOS is locked up pretty tight so information got leaked because information gets leaked even at the highest levels information gets leaked and uh, Apple found out about this and they squash it I don't know if Project Pegasus is still going on it might be the only reason that it actually worked was because of a zero day vulnerability and that means that the vulnerability was there since day zero. It's just nobody noticed this. Zero day vulnerabilities can be worth an awful lot amount of money. And the NSO group is one of those groups that can definitely use that kind of stuff. So, so yeah, that's what they are. That's what they do. That's the spooky part of it. Now, the thing about everything being leaked. There's a lot of people that can say, oh, the American government will never leak anything. I want to remind you a story. I want to remind you of a story involving, I believe it was the NSA and Kaspersky, Israeli intelligence, and the Russian Federation. Okay? So since Kaspersky, which is an excellent an antivirus, is, is owned and operated within the USSR, Basically, they're under the USS, USSR, I can't believe I actually said that, the Russians. The Russians are using, and, and just like China, yeah, you can have a private business, but, you know, your government could come and break a few of your knuckles and make a few of your family disappear if you didn't agree with them, if you didn't help them out with whatever they were doing, and that's what happens in Russia when you don't listen to them, when you don't listen to the commanders. So... There were a lot of people who were like, no, we shouldn't use Kaspersky, it's Russian, and we don't want to go with the Reds or the Pinks or whatever. And what ended up happening is within the NSA, there were some totally talented individuals. One individual in particular who took one of these zero-day vulnerabilities, they took it home, they put it on their computer that had Kaspersky installed. Kaspersky scans this and is like, oh, I don't know what this is. But I don't like it. I'm sending it back to base because that's what antiviruses do. So now Kaspersky has this vulnerability. Kaspersky has this vulnerability that somehow got leaked all of a sudden. How did it get leaked? Well, this individual that had this zero-day vulnerability on their phone that they took home from work also pirated stuff off like the Pirate Bay and installed programs they pirated onto their computer. So... I'm talking programs, I'm not talking videos, I'm not talking audio. A lot of people out there that say if you download videos and audio, then you're going to get viruses. You can't get videos, you can't get viruses from videos and audio. Just make sure there's not a .exe at the end of whatever you're downloading and you'll be fine. So anyways, Israel hacks Kaspersky and finds this American tool. And they know it's American because the Americans and, the, and uh, the Israelis are together on a lot of stuff. They're on the same side when it comes to cyber espionage. And they're like, oh, Kaspersky, the Russians, they must have this information. They must have this information. So the Americans are like, okay, no more Kaspersky within the USA. 
or not within the USA, within government buildings, which is kind of unfortunate because Kaspersky is a very, very good antivirus. It's like one of the top antiviruses, man. And Russia just can't, uh, Russia just can't get a break. So <clears throat> Russia's also in trouble for apparently releasing viruses out there. And the reason that people think that Russia's releasing these viruses is these viruses, um, these viruses have been made with a Russian keyboard and uh, they were using a Russian date stamp. Now, if, if you were making if you were making a program, would you really want to make it point to yourself? A lot of people say a lot of people say that it was the North Koreans that did this, and they pointed at Russia because the Americans just get scared, and the Americans do get scared. They love being scared. They freaking love being scared. I'm Canadian. We're almost American. We also love being scared. <sighs> it happens quite a bit. It, uh, it definitely moves a lot of money. It gets people motivated. It uh, gets a lot of stuff moved. But anyways. That's what's going on. The NSO group, Israeli ex-intelligence cyber hackers that work for the government. Government funded, I suppose. Anyways, check them out. Look them up. Know about this stuff. I love learning about hackers. I love learning about hacker groups. Everyone loves to be a hacker, but nobody cares about the history or the information of the hackers out there or what is going on. They don't actually get a lot of respect. It just seems to be the kind of... It just seems to be the kind of thing where you get grease balls who just like to have a little power. Like someone who just wants to have a gun so they can mess with people. That's what hackers seem to be these days. Not all of them, but let's face it. I think true hackers out there know what I'm talking about when I say that. And of course I'm not talking about true hackers or crackers. And I'm not using that racially. <laughs> computer crackers. A hacker is someone that demands uh, intimate knowledge of a computer system or systems. And uh, a hacker, a cracker is someone who wants to break into those systems. There's a difference. Keep that in mind. Anyways, that's it for me, ladies and gentlemen. Take care of each other. Nev from Nev's Tech Bits. Have a good one. Like and subscribe if you like this stuff.